something went on here, something went on there. And this time on TNT. I catch up with Jer. And I catch up with Jono. Plus, guess who's back? Back again. Gordy's back. Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> That's all coming up right now on TNT. Hello, hello, hello. I'm going to tell you something, Jeremy Taggart. What's that? I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something with my mouth, and I'm going to tell it to your ears. From my what? mouth. A lot's been going on lately, okay? Yeah. And I have a tendency to feel like, oh, I feel so bad. I feel so guilty about the pod. We, we were doing so good on the Monday drops, and then we missed a couple of Mondays. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. It's it's First life. of all, sometimes, life sometimes stuff comes up. Yeah. Second of all, it's the summertime. Yeah. And Every, I spend... out. So much time with my family this weekend. We went camping. Um, we went to a Yogi Bear campground where there's the Yogi Bear um, flag raising and the Yogi Bear flag lowering, and then story time with Boo Boo, and then um, pancake breakfast with C- is it Cindy? I don't know. I don't know. That's I'm. You're going too far, too deep into the cast for me there. Well, the Hanna Barbera people come once a year to every Yogi Bear campground to make sure they're keeping things legit. Yeah, you can't mess around, right? It's you don't mess around, not with that bear either. No chip and paint on Fred, Freddy Flintstones. You area. can't have that. Oh, no. But this is, the, this is the point. I jest. It's true. But the point is, sometimes we put so much oh. pressure on ourselves, and I'm certainly guilty of it, that you need to cut yourself some slack sometimes. So, buds... Yeah. I am sorry that we haven't gotten a podcast out the last two Mondays. It is a drag because we do notice there's, you know, good traction and interaction when we manage to get one out every Monday. But you know what? I was spending fam time and it was really fun and I don't regret it. No, me either. I was just came back from the park with the kids. There you go. We were playing baseball, the whole family. How about that? What do you mean? Were you the just ball. whiffing them in there over the plate? <laughs> yeah, no, we were just throwing the ball around and then, you know, taking some swings. Everybody, Annalise, she was getting into it. Can you hit? What do you mean, can I hit? Can I hit? Yeah. Could I hit? Yeah. Could you? Like back in the day? Yeah. Could I hit? Yeah, I was, I was a good hitter. That's why I, I when I wasn't pitching, I, I usually played, I either caught, played catcher, or I played first, or... Just to stay in. But I thought the whole thing with you pitching types and us drummers is that we can't hit. Oh, no, that's not the case for me. I was right into it. I loved hitting. Jeremy, let me ask you this question. Couldn't hit home runs. I didn't hit hit it far, but I could hit contact consistent, big time. What are you bad at, Jeremy? Serious question. What am I I bad at? Yep. Dancing. Terrible dancer. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, I've just never really got it. It's not, has not natural to, for me, that's for sure. I, rhythm is, but dancing ain't. Like dancing. I don't know, lots of things. So did you dance find, with Lisa early on? And she was like, let's go dancing? What, like, like, let's go to the club and go dancing? Yeah. No. I don't, maybe if I was, like, banged up or something. I don't think I, don't think I went dancing much. I was never that guy, though. Let's go dancing. Although, I love that guy. The guy that ha- can do that. Oh, I love those guys, like, too. Those guys have big wheels, those guys. Yeah, they but back get... in the day, what? wouldn't you have done anything when you were courting Lisa? And if she was like, let's go dancing, you're yeah. like, all right, we're going dancing. But but thank I'm thankful she wasn't. She's not a big let's go dancing person. She doesn't like the dancing? I, maybe after a few drinks. Some like people it's... love dancing. Yeah, no, I know. And the back in the day, that was all people like to do. But people, I think it's, I think it's great. I think it's really good for you. I know that. I love that we've said like dancing be- at least getting... fifteen times and never with a G. Like at the wedding, 
the guy who's soaked, like his whole suit is completely soaked through and he just keeps going. From being on the like D floor? Like he, and then doing shots and coming back out. Like he's saving himself a lot of headache in the morning, doing a lot of that dancing, keeping the calories going, keeping the sweat, getting the alcohol out. Right? Maybe that's the move. He, well, because he's, yeah, he's there. It's like, it's like instead of going jogging in the morning, you're doing it as you're going. I mean, mind you, if he continues and goes in well into the night, he's just going to be paying for it big time no matter what this is good what else are you bad at uh lots of things so many things uh well a home and garden work as much as i like cutting the lawn if something breaks i don't i'm not the guy to ask uh put the car pulls over and nothing something's wrong with it don't look at me <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah uh, Math. We all know math. Like if there's some <laughs> like some serious questioning, like we gotta keep track of no way, man. You're not the I'm math guy. I'm not that guy. Uh, uh I don't know, like a, most things actually. <laughs> <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> Exercise? Well, I'm not good at that. Keeping that up, I think it's although, good. I think it's good to be comfortable with what you're not good at. I'm, no, I'm optimistic about wanting to still have exercise as a regular thing in my life, but I'm not good at it because I. I mean, maybe uh, it's not the, the. The it's just the the exercise. Well, no, because once I start running, I'm like, this is like. I don't mind playing with the kids. That's fun. I was running around a lot with them. That's probably good exercise. I don't really realize that. Sure. Yeah. Trampoline, we got that's really good exercise. What is? Trampoline. You do five minutes on that thing and you're 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 worked. Oh, you're not kidding. Lisa can do forty five minutes on the Jacobs ladder, which is that moving ladder that you keep climbing. Holy forty five minutes. She's actually training for a marathon this fall. A real one. Um, like, what is it? 42 is she a happy kilo- jogger? You don't see many 40, happy joggers. 42 kilometers, Jonathan. Yikes. Like, I can't even... I don't think I could walk 15 without having to shut things down. No. I don't even know if 10. I remember when I was a kid, when you walk forever. I remember I walked from Weston and Finch to... Or, sorry, Shepherd and Finch... Or sorry, Shepherd and uh, Shepherd and Weston Road to Young Street. That's like kind of across the city. And that took me all night, like I don't know, six hours, seven hours. What were the circumstances under which you were doing that walk? I think that's I think that's only I think that's only like thirty kilometers, maybe thirty five. It was I was a kid, just when you're a kid and summer nights with your buds. So was there a destination? You never just go for a walk or walk a long ways with a bod? Yeah, but I usually always ended up back where I started. No, yeah, just but like one of those, like, you know, Forrest Gump style where it's just like, let's just go and see how far we can walk. Because you take the bus when you're done, but... So there was no, like, stand by me thing where you were going to see a body or anything? No, but there was that when I was younger, like the country roads walks. Yeah. That's like two, two, three miles and to get to the river or go to the swimming hole, like that kind of vibe. Yeah. That's good walking. But I, I mean more of the city walking where you just kind of, you're just burning, burling around. 10K is no big deal for walking around, like if you're walking in and out of places, but 42K. That's a lot. That's like walking from my house, like which is basically the top of Richmond Hill, down to like Cherry Beach, like right at Lake Ontario. That's far. All the way down the 404 and the DVP to the bottom. That's a big walk, man. Can't do that. Can't do that anymore. She's training, though. She did 15 the other day, I think. Um, you know, when I was a kid... And I went to England with my sister. We came back with two things. One was the Rubik's Cube. 
first one in North America. Hey, wait a second. I'll let you finish, but you might got to remind me to tell you what you're not good at. Oh, there's a lot of things I'm not good at. I, I know, I know. Are you going to tell me or are you going to ask me? Ask you, sorry. Oh, okay. I'd be curious if you're going to tell me because I'm sure you've observed some things I am not good no, at. No, imagine. I'm like, going to tell you being what you're relaxed. not good at. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, you're, you're not good at staying up past 1130 at night. No, I'm That's not good definitely. at that. <laughs> I'm not good at that. I'm not. But no, I'm not as the story. good at just being cool. <laughs> what? Get out of here. I'm uh, I'm Niles Crane. No, you're not. Um, you thanks, wish. Bod. So when I when I was a kid and I went dangling with my sister, we came back with North America's first Rubik's cube. But also, we came back with a game called Swing Ball. And it's a game <laughs> where there's a pole with a tennis ball on a string that hangs from the top and you stand on opposite sides of the pole and whack the tennis ball back and forth um, at each yeah. other. That's like tether ball. Yeah, it's like tether ball, but it's with a tennis ball and rackets and it's called swing ball. And oh, okay. we were obsessed with it when we brought it back from England when I was a kid. And the other day, I'm in Indigo in chapters because the girls got um, gift certificates for Graydon. Swing. So they were there spending them at uh, Indigo Chapters, and Swing Ball is back. Oh, it is, eh? And so I we've been playing Swing Ball like crazy you around can, our house. You can take a tennis ball to the eye, though, if you're not careful, right? Oh, no kidding. I have before, and it's it's bad. Oh, really? Yeah, so the girls have to be careful. Well, the good thing is because it's on a string, there... if you stand a certain distance back, yeah. there's no way it can hit you. She but don't, they don't have to wear goggles. <laughs> no, goggles. <laughs> no, but I've been so um, hey, consumed by swing ball the way that I was when I was eight. It's back, and I feel competitive about it. And swing ball is great exercise. Swing ball. So you're just kind of running around, ducking, and running in. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. The Swing first the- couple of minutes, it's like. Oh, this is kind of neat. But then you're not playing swing ball for a few minutes, and you're thinking, I wonder what swing ball's doing. And then you just go back, and he, this is the depth of <laughs> lameness. When the girls were inside the rig on the weekend camping, I was often yeah. out in the driveway of our campsite playing swing ball by myself. Oh, wow, really? Hitting the ball back and forth to myself. Just practic? Practic? Yeah, some practice. Yeah, that's good. Hey, um, I remember something happened to me that was awful. What? I, I uh, uh, had a good time with, with friends, uh, Robin and Warren, up at their 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 farm in Creemore during the day. And I came home, and just right before bed, I had a couple pieces of ham, like sliced ham, fired some mustard on it. Go to bed, and I woke up at like three or four, four in the morning. I went to bed at like one, and then woke up at like four thirty or something. Just kind of like a burning stomach, <clears throat> thinking I had to go to the bathroom. So Where's I, this going? I sit, I'm sitting down, and it's just like the stomach is just starting to to really hurt, and it's like, you know, I'm like I'm going to the bathroom a bit, like sitting down, right, and then. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, no, like, I was getting the wets in the mouth. <laughs> like, I'm going to throw up, too. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, no. And there's, like, nothing. I thought I maybe I could hold hold one end when I, was, but when I, when I stood up. And I was, I was like, what's what's worse? Because I, I figured if I could, I can clench some of it. So it's not, at least I have some control there on that side as opposed to puking all over the the bathroom right <laughs> so i sit up and stand up and i had like just threw up everything in my stomach and then like everything else was going on too like that's the worst the linda blair everything i peeing and pooing just ridiculous like what the hell's going on like so both ends yeah the when that was it like one like disaster for like 15 minutes and then over. I, well, I, I went into the shakes. Like, I went into English patient shakes. 
I had to lie down. And and then uh, it all kind of subsided and I went to sleep and woke up. Fine. Obviously cleaned up the bathroom and Lisa helped clean up. Oh, up she did? Up. Yeah, because she could hear me. Go, off. She could hear me screaming and yelling and barfing. <laughs> <laughs> yelling while barfing? Well, just like, yeah, you know, like that stuff. Because it was really violent. I was just, and it was really uh, painful too. Like my stomach was killing me. This that, is the thing though. And and you know what? I, 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 you know, when you eat something bad, you know what was the ham. I knew it was the ham because I could say, I was like, throw that ham out. And Lisa's like, are you sure it was? I was like, no, I can feel it. I can just sense it. Get it out of the house forever. It'll so, be yeah. a while till you're back on the ham train. That was well, no, it was just bad. It was just the there was like, I don't know, it was a bad batch, man. It was the stuff in the uh, the slice stuff that you buy, right? Yeah. It wasn't even old or anything. It was just like, who knows, man? I don't know what the hell's going on. Maybe the guy that was slicing it had his hand, you know, in his ear or something. Fuck that. Was it the um, the uh, like hickory smoked ham or anything? I don't remember. Maybe. Why? Is that something that's normal with that? No, but just sometimes when there are, are um, you know, really distinct tastes, that kind of puts it over the top a little bit. Or maybe it'll be a while till you're back to hickory no, smoke, I'm, you know? I'm, it's got, I guess, no, I don't have, it's not like one of those things where I can't eat ham. It's. I just knew that's what it was, for sure. <laughs> We haven't even talked about Canada Day. The guy. The guy. Where did you go what? for Canada Day that they had this tainted ham? <laughs> I just hung out at that at, at our bud's house. Just chilled out in the uh, Melanchthon Hills of the Headwaters. Did it feel like Canadianity? Oh, fuck. Big time. Yeah, swimming in a swimming hole. Like, Here's seriously. what we did. We had... Um, uh, Remember last summer we got a, an inflatable four banger to tow behind the boat? <laughs> nice. And then we used it once and then uh, I punctured it on a nail. Oh. And so Carol called the people and said, um, we punctured it on a nail. What do we do uh, if we punctured it? And they said, well, why don't we just send you another one? So they sent us another one last year and we've been sitting on it for a whole year and haven't used it yet. So we inflated it and um, we've been using our four banger, the new one. And folks across the lake, where my in-laws have a cottage, have fireworks every Canada Day. So we towed the four banger out behind the boat during the fireworks. So what? It sank? No, it didn't sink. No, it doesn't have a bad ending. It has a great ending. Oh no! I thought the nail thing would came back down in the middle of it. Well, it's been such a crazy heat wave here that I can't seem to here spend too. enough time in the water. Yeah. You're like, we're like that guy in the ice, your buddy. <laughs> yeah. I just want to lie in a bathtub full of ice on my front lawn. But it seems to have broken a little bit now. Yeah, no, it has a little bit, but still, it's it, that, that five-day stretch in the 30s plus into the high four, 30s was really rough. Nutsky. Yeah, people, people were getting sick in Montreal. A lot of people died in Quebec. Yeah, it's awful. Ooh, it's awful, yeah, especially yeah. for the um, more vulnerable among us. Well, yeah, if you're outside and you're you can't get inside, you're you only have a matter of time before you're just dehydrating to the point of being really ill. How's Rebel doing in the heat, bud? Oh, he's fine. We got the AC cranking for Rebs. No kidding. But then it also does something weird to your system when you go outside. Yeah, you feel like you're going from the sauna into the pool. Well, exactly, Jeremy. Or the opposite. Pool into the sauna. Um, we haven't done a pod, by the way, since we announced our three dates, did we? Did we? How we're doing... Um, oh, we, we said we were... Yeah, we said we were announcing it, but we didn't say St. Exactly Catharines, Oshawa, and, and Toronto. Tickets. Uh, August 10th, 11th, and 12th. Tickets are available now. Taggartandtorrens.ca. Yeah. Excited to go to Oshawa and St. Catharines because we haven't been to either and we're due to get back to Toronto. 
Yeah, it's going to be a good time. Not to mention, it's early days, but we're working on some sneaky, potential, extra bonus summer dates. Yeah. In addition to our September East Coast rip. Wouldn't that be on a... On a... You want to take a break on TNT, yeah? Yeah, then we talk about how Donovan did the uh, take me home. It had to be every beat was a second. Oh, no. A second. Yeah. <laughs> He's got to do it. Be right back, buds. Where's my beer chair? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. I don't understand. <laughs> This is like if this song was playing every morning in Groundhog Day. <laughs> but you could have you could have a clock that could be this song. That's okay, but the, I don't understand because you tweeted something about this song recently about seconds and beats, and I don't understand. Well, it's like it's exactly the same as a second, like one beat, it's like 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. So do 42. you think that was like accidental, or do you think that was... No, because there's no way. It's the, the click track is in seconds. So it's the whole song. You could put it right to the end, in the middle. He's always, he's always on the second, right? Sometimes it, you can feel it rush a bit in the bridge, but then it comes back on. <laughs> so is it, is it electric drums? <coughs> or is it like a drum machine? It's all drum machine, sounds like, to me. And then drums come in. There's like a real kit comes in, and then there's like wicked, wicked drum fills towards the end. It really gets into things. So could I venture a guess then, though math was never my strong suit either, that this is 60 beats per minute? <laughs> Here comes a tall, he like... He or overdubs some wicked, like, roto-toms or something. <laughs> this part. It's like Phil Styles. But he's only doing it over the vocal. He's doing it over the vocal, which is kind of odd for a drummer playing over his own stuff. Well, he can't. Have we've established that before, haven't we? He can't. What's that? He can't sing and play drums like that. Phil? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, he can. At the same time. Yeah, for sure. Have you not seen Genesis in concert or a film or anything? Yeah, I guess I have back in the day. Him and Chester Thompson, uh, he used to do it by himself, but with Chester Thompson, it makes it a hell of a lot easier to get off and sing his own jams. But yeah, no, he plays plays everything. He can do that, no problem. The thing is, he could hop on the piano or the bass, the guitar, anywhere. So why did they start bringing Chester Thompson? Because at, if you're going to see a concert sa- and the guy's sitting down in the back the whole time? Well, be- when he took over for Peter Gabriel, he was singing everything. So to be sitting behind the drums all night after the, the a front man like Peter Gabriel, who was wearing costumes and going out over the crowd and... Like, he was the one of the best front men ever. All of a sudden, to have zero front men, not even a guy standing there. So he, <laughs> he when when he, he became the singer, he actually auditioned with, to the guys saying, hey, I think I can do this. And because uh, he wasn't singing before, or just singing. And uh, he, yeah, he got Chester Thompson to kind of, uh, go to play jams when so it's just he can be out front and that's because he wasn't a front man he had to learn how to do that too right why did Peter Whole Gabriel other, leave probably wanted to do his own thing because he was just probably a lot different I mean that the, their early Genesis stuff is super progressive and it's interesting because both of them went more pop at the split of Genesis and Peter Gabriel because his first album was although it was kind of dark and a little bit out there it was still a pop record more than crazy Genesis stuff but you could also argue that Genesis became a lot more commercial once Phil Collins joined yeah, the group that that's what I'm saying it's like land of confusion they, styles well yeah for sure definitely anyway I always pictured since since finding out that that jams 
could be a clock in your house, right? Because it's the exact same tempo. I, so I, was, I figured the session would be pretty funny if it was Donovan who, for some reason, had to have it that way. Well, so so technically, for people that don't know, of which I am one, if you're in the studio and you're trying to find a tempo for a song, wouldn't you say, speed it up, slow it down, let's try it a little bit faster? So someone must have said, let's try it at 60 beats per minute, right? Well, honestly, tempos come from the feel of the song. So wherever the song came from, whether it be just like a riff or even a drum beat, like there's a feeling where it is. And that feeling is very specific to a time. And that, that just happened to be the same time around probably as seconds. Because there are songs that are really close anyway to that tempo, but uh, I haven't like delved into how many actually line up the same way, you know what I mean? But I'm sure there are other ones, but it's it's definitely the, the tempo is kind of something that happens first. You can try it faster or slower depending on if it's not working, but I mean, usually if it's something that's strong and you're digging, especially if it's musically driven, then it's the tempo kind of has a number. So would you have a click track in your head when you're recording a song? Yeah, sometimes, most of the time, sometimes not. But uh, you have a click track, so everybody, for overdubbing stuff, it's not difficult. Yeah, right. Because if you're playing at the same time, it's fine, but as soon as you want to put a guitar over top, it's like to line you know to find out where you are and then if it's all on a on a click then on the computer in front of you it can be kind of on a grid of beats so would phil collins hear doom ka doom ka and then he just adds dip up a doom pop he would just hear like tick 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 doom pa for him it was seconds he could have just been straight up like tick tick Tick. Duck, a doom, duck, a duck, a duck. Duck, a doom, duck, a duck, a duck. Yeah. Cool. Sometimes, people, sometimes drummers prefer double time, so that's easier to stay tick, on. Some, tick, some tick, drummers like tick, tick, just tick, the tick. quarter notes. How about six sec? Tick. 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 That's like hard, that. right? Yeah. Like for Unforgiven you know Metallica. <clears throat> you know what I'm good at? What? Is like keeping the beat at like when you're at like Sobeys or in a store and the jam is goes away for the announcements. Oh no way! No matter how long, I can always keep it going. It comes right back on the beat. It's like something to pass the time. That's an incredible skill. Because sometimes it can be like fifteen seconds, twelve seconds. You got to keep it. Together. Oh my gosh! Please, can we play that game? <laughs> <laughs> play the game on the beat it oh my be gosh like, what a great game it would have to be like a film thing maybe we can do that as a in as a bit in something for the a ccs pro, uh deal that's great <laughs> on the beat with jeremy taggart because today we're going to walmart and scarborough to try and keep the beat to three songs i love it <laughs> but in theory wouldn't it also work if i was playing a song i took it out you kept the beat going, and it brought the song back. Uh, yeah, but it's it, yeah, I guess it would. But it, the only thing is, when I'm on here and you're there, there's a slight delay when we're recording, right? Remember, and that uh, it can go off the rails, and then that's the end of that. That's all you get then. Well, like that's why we, you and I, uh, little known fact, have to count to ten before we start every segment. Only took so. us 148 hours to figure that out. Yeah, it's just, it was a great suggestion from Tim that we count it up because there's always a delay, especially if you're further away. Like if you're in the West Coast, for example, it's like there's a almost a second delay. And you can hear it sometimes in in pods if there's a bit of a delay. Yep. So that's like if I'm sharing it. a room in Vegas. Um, Taggart. Yeah. Last night was Sunday night. We uh, were late into the evening on a Sunday night after a full famcation weekend. Mm -hmm. Today is Monday. It is lunchtime on the Mr. D television program. And I am yeah. in my um, little changing room getting uh, enjoying some lunch. And it occurred to me, uh, when I said to you last night we should finish the pod today, 
or rather it didn't occur to me, I need a phone to do that because you have to call me on a phone. So props to my friend Judith Morris, who does yes. extras wrangling for us, who lent me her phone to do this um, segment. She is Did the she daughter be- of Blaine Morris, who composed the Trailer Park Boys theme. Fantastic. There you go. What if she said Noah Landon when you asked her? Well, I asked two people <laughs> at the same time, and for what it's worth, they both said yes, no problem. That's great. Because not Noah many Landon. people would part with their phone at lunch for too, 45 right? minutes at their lunch break, yeah. Ooh, yeah, that's like got to gotta resort to good old conversation. As weird as that sounds. I know, eh? It's so hilarious, eh? one of the things I was doing this morning uh, between takes on Mr. D was... Um, I was shooting with uh, Wes, Maestro Fresh Wes. And, nice. And uh, I, I was imagining our Miami Vice spinoff called Miramichi Vice. So imagine the French Canadian guy as a detective. <laughs> and all the references are hyper local New Brunswick. Hey, Dan, can you come here for a second, please? You know the hill that's magnetic? Well, I've got a fish and chips with him. And there was a $10 <laughs> bill wrapped around the app. Wouldn't that be the best <laughs> cop show? Yeah, I know. But so Can I borrow your girl? link, Elm? I found a clue at La Plage. Là. It's a good cop, bad cop thing, or are they? Both yeah, good just... cop, bon cop. Are you? Who's the good cop? You? Um, I assume he's on the take. Oh, he is. We got another your clue guy. on the tips line, is it? He's, he's like, say something about a bunch of cigarettes that you don't know where they went. But I found a bunch of missing cigarettes. But they weren't there. <laughs> I went to look for the cigarette, but they were gone. But he was gone. I love when the pronouns belong to you, people. And then going over to your house, like, holy moly, where'd you get all these smokes, Danielle? Well, I found his shoe ear. Don't you think it's kind of funny? <laughs> like, um, it's Matlock, but French Canadian in New Brunswick. <laughs> Man. Looks like we're gonna have to take a road trip up to Bathurst. I have to ask some questions of him. Somebody stole a custom bowling ball at the alley. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever notice he only have three finger? How is he playing bowlings with a four finger ball? <laughs> you know, he's doing the good cop, bad cop to see if someone has the bowling ball <laughs> at their house. Hey, when was the last time you tried bowlings? Well, it's a chance I would find you at the bowling alleys on Friday night. (laughs) And he shows him his scores. Like, it goes from, like, bowling, like, 230s to, like, 260s up until the day the ball was stolen. (laughs) 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 That's how he gets them. (laughs) One of my favorite Matlock moments ever was there was a guy in the stand, and Matlock goes, you right-handed? Yeah. And he throws him a pen, and the guy catches it with his whatever hand. And Matlock was like, oh, really? Gotcha. And the jury's like, oh! Yeah, there's a gasp and they're nodding. No, but do him picking up the guy's playbook with all the scores in the recent weeks. So answer me this. On July 10, you added 116. But on July 11, you added 248. How do you explain this? (laughs) It's the worst cop show. Oh, but, the, but the cases are actually legit. It's just the accent is terrible. And all the smarmy jokes and everything that David Caruso would say. And there's like a craft brew that's only made in the bowling alley and he has them in his fridge. Yeah, or they find a cadaver with the head cut off and he's like, someone got an ad of himself. <laughs> All the lighthearted jokes. There's always like black humor at the end, like some dark, crazy macabre. Or maybe every episode starts with, it's time for me to get a day off. And then he gets a call that there's a case and he's like, just my luck. Oh man, always trying to avoid work. Yeah. (laughs) Putting a styrofoam (laughs) cooler in the back of the truck. Oh, it's the Sarge calling again. Or it's his kids calling that they want him to take him to camp. But he's too, he doesn't want to. Daddy's coming, okay? I just have to solve this murder. He wants to go fishing instead? <laughs> or no, what if he does go fishing, but he pulls up a body? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh no, now I have to work? Even I can't take a vacation. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says when the body comes up. <laughs> 
He's trying he's to shove the body mad. back in the he's, river. He's more mad that he has to work than the actual case that he's got to solve. Now it's another case that I have to save him. <laughs> I, wa- I was calling it Miramichi Vice. But there's something so funny. Like, imagine if we were doing a cop show and you were the, like, Mel Gibson type. Yeah. And I was the, like, by the book guy. And I always had to go and find you. And you crossed the line and were shaking guys down. <laughs> She's just, like, all of a sudden punching right away. Punching Let's guys. roll. We got another call on the tap line. Let's go to Crystal Palace in Moncton and ride the go gator. What's it called again? Miramichi Cop? Miramichi. <laughs> Looks like we have to go take a road trip to St. John. <laughs> I would watch the living bejesus out of Miramichi Vice. It's like 80s problems. Like there's yep. a bunch of kids that are high on rush. Remember that? I found rush? a bunch of cocaine and a Sobeys bag and a lobster <laughs> trap. You see it? No. No, it's small town. It's it's remember that rush people used to sniff? What's rush? Yeah. What is it? I don't know. It was like some cheap high that you could somehow no. get in head shops was called rush. There's a rush outbreak in Aurelia. How do I not remember that? Uh, rush. Maybe it was an Ontario thing. We broke up an Elmer's glue ring. <coughs> How about kids are sniffing white out? We used to do that. Did you? <laughs> no. Or like what, what about what were those markers? The uh, Yoo-Hoo sticks. The super intense ones. Yeah. No. Oh yeah, those those markers when you all of a sudden start like getting hazy halfway through a project because <laughs> you're all close when you're coloring. And they don't even sell them anymore. You're like, oh, it's like big ammonia stench. Was a different time. Oh. Remember, remember teachers coming from a dart breaks into the classroom, big reeking breath, leaning over your desk. Yeah. How yeah. many numbers go into this integer? No, my favorite was the closed mouth nostril breathe. The <sighs> onto the that was more direct. It would like hit your desk and spread into your face. Still with <laughs> excess dart. Yeah. Excess dart clouds and, coming out of their nose. And coffee. <laughs> like stale coffee, dart stench. Also bad. What was the worst thing a teacher ever did to you? Did you ever have chalk thrown at you? I had, I had, uh, I was messing my hair up one day in class, like all super crazy. That's so teenage boy. Yeah, and the teacher, like, was not having it and grabbed me and, like, started, like, brushing it out with some comb in her pocket like super aggressively <laughs> and like knots and me like holy ma come on like Whoa. just getting my hair torn up <laughs> did you have long hair then no but it was like you know not not super short but not not long at all can you imagine trying to get away with that nowadays oh i know i know what'd you do oh yeah. i brushed his hair back the way it's supposed to look yeah, I probably took out a few chunks of hair too, but whatever. You'd remember be the fired. strap? The strap? Yeah, I remember yep. hearing about it. I didn't ever get it. We had the strap. I remember the era of it. My brother got it. I think some kids in our elementary school got it. On the hand. Looks like we have to pay a visit to Captain Dan. Yeah, I think they were like, okay, we can't do it. This is inhuma- inhumane to do it on their butts, so let's just do it on their hands. I had a couple of uh, desk rattlers, like grab the front of the desk and kind of lift it off the ground, shake it a little bit just to wake you up. Yeah? Snappy too? Yeah, I've got that for sure. I got got the grabs on the collar grabs. Like the up against the wallsies? A little bit of that, not full on, but just like grabbing the collar with one hand shakes. Do you know what parents can do now? Parents can demand to the school board that they be forwarded all emails and correspondence involving their child's name. Oh my god. I've heard that news employed, or that move employed a couple of times. That gets the helicopter parents fired up big time. Yeah. Oof. What were you saying about my kid? Well, I was saying he acts up in class. See, I'm lucky enough to have a school that's great, and the teachers are all very cool and... 
everybody kind of works hard to do better. So they I just Snapchat like you if something's going down at school. You know what I heard? The uh, I heard that the kids are allowed to have cell phones in school. I didn't know that that was like okay. I thought, and they're using it under the thing of emergency when it's like, what the hell are you talking about emergency? Like you're in a classroom. You know, there's people at the school to take care of issues if you have something happen. I feel like there's no circumstance under which a kid needs a cell phone in a class. No. And there's other, there's so there's kids on the school, like uh, like in school, for the, the, in Lynn Berry example, kids are just in school all day on their cell phones. Like just you know what? Their, I should rephrase that, Jeremy. I shouldn't say, that sounds really judgy. I feel like there's no situation. I should well, say I, I can't is. think of a situation where a kid would need a phone in class, but I invite buds to um, inform me otherwise because maybe there are and I why, just can't why think of would them. You, if, if you need your parent at any, all times just in case of something, then you shouldn't be in the school. I mean, like, that's you, certainly my default feeling. Yeah. I, there's everything that's if there's allergies if there's something that you like you you make people in the school aware of these problems there's no uh re, i just can't think of any reason and there hasn't ever been phones and some in my my kids school for example there are phones but they get caught as soon as they, they can tell that they're on social media or anything other than looking up information on, on something whether it's you know, trying to, to find information on the project that they have because there's not enough computers or whatever. Like, I get that, but it's it's closely monitored and the kids get it. But clearly in Barrie, it's not where the it's gotten out of hand. At some of these schools, I'm not saying every classroom, but what I heard about of a kid that's in the classroom saying that's how things are. So Well, by the way, if my kid goes to the office and says they're not feeling well and they want to call home... I'm counting on the office to be the first line of defense and at least say, are you sure? Are you sure it's, there's only two hours left to school? Are you sure yeah. you can't stick it out? And by the time a call gets to me, I, I am counting on the school and my kids, frankly, that it's actually of uh, uh, to that degree. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's crazy stuff. But let's uh, take a little break, Budski. Take a break, Bud. Be right back, Buds. Hello. Hey, Bernie. Hey, Gordy, how are you? Good. Can you give me a hand through the window real quick? Oh, yeah. No problem there. Oh, geez. Thank you so much. And just grab my axe you know what? for me real quick, will you? Uh, yeah, no problem. You're, you know, you're lighter. Just as light. Maybe even lighter than you've been in the past. Well, I'm, I've been boxing, and my class is featherweight, Jeez. if you would believe that. Wow, you still got some snap in you there. Do you know what I think? It's keeping me youthful. What's that? I've been listening to songs written by some of the more modern day composers and performers. Yeah. Okay. That's and good. Uh, I I'm still thinking I should put together an album of covers because it's yeah. an excellent premise. It's always a good idea. I mean, uh, people love to hear what you're doing, and they'd love to hear your interpretation of modern music. That would be. Well, quite I'm just thinking of so many of my songs that have been covered over the years, and there was even a punk band from California that did. A copy of Sundown. They did cover of it, and okay. it was never how I imagined the song would go. But maybe I can do that for someone else. It's kind of a leapfrog. The younger kids come to me, and then I jump right over them. Okay, Gord, do you have like what kind of songs are you gonna? Do you have any ideas or? This one's oh. called X's and O's. Do you know oh. it? Oh, uh, I think so. That, yeah. One, two, three, they're gonna run back to me Cause I'm the best baby that they never gonna keep One, two, three, they're gonna run back to me They always wanna come but they never wanna leave X's in oh, 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 they haunt me Like oh, 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 okay. they want me Four. To make them oh, 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 they want Okay, go, go What do you I mean, think? Well, I, I just th lyrically, and it's just a little. I just don't know if that's the right one, you know. I, I beg to differ, Burn. It has ghosts in it and everything, just like a ghost in a wishing well. Listen. Exes and oh oh oh, they haunt me. Yeah, I don't Let I, go, oh, oh, stay with me. I, I don't think it's about ghosts, though. 
The song isn't about, oh, what's it about then? I think it's about uh, getting it on with the, the uh, ex, and the ex doesn't, they don't get the uh, sex. Well, what if I kind of shine a light on the ghost thing, so it's like, exes, and oh, they hunt yeah. me like ghosts. Okay, go on, go on, come on now. To That's... make them all they won't all like right. go. What, where? What, how can you make that sound, that voice all of a sudden there, Gore? <laughs> maybe I was thinking that could be, maybe it's like a Halloween special released. Wow, there's just a whole bottom end that I never knew about. Hey, <laughs> what other songs have you got? Well, do you know that, um, have you heard of uh, Nicki Minaj at Uh, uh, yes, uh, okay. Yeah. She has the one that goes, uh, boom, ba doom, bam, boom, ba doom, bam, super bass, goes in, boom, ba doom, da da doom, ba doom, bam, super bass. Like, are you going to just sing it like that, or? Well, I was like thinking I would dancing? just do three and a half minutes of that. Boom, ba doom, bam, boom, ba doom, bam, super bass, go then. Boom, ba doom, bam, boom, ba doom, bam, super okay. bass. Are you going to do the raps, too, or no? No, I think just the boom, ba doom, boom part. Okay. Hey, Bernie, here's, here's what I was thinking. I think super bass refers to a gentleman's posterior. What what else you got? Hey, give me uh, some of those Nanaimo bars in the case here. What do you think super bass means? Mmm, delicious. I, I don't... Do you think it means someone's going in the K-hole? Maybe. Do you you probably other... don't even get that reference. Listen, I, I've, I've got some work to do this afternoon. What other songs have you got? Do you know what I... Okay, if you, you really want to know what I think it means? Got that boom ba doom boom boom ba doom doom bath salts. You think that's what it's about? I think it's code for the what the kids mean. Bath salts. Maybe. You mean like you the, never guy that, know. the guy that ate that stuff and then it was eating people's faces? Is that what he was doing? Is bath salts? Yeah, that's apparently some crazy stuff there. I wouldn't mess with that, Gord. You're a little too frail for that kind of stuff. What about all the small things? Truth cares, truth brings, always I know you'll be in my show. Can, can we, uh, can, can we move I, on I wasn't here? quite finished. I just stopped to breathe and take some throat spray. I just don't Watching, think that... Watching, waiting, and I just don't think it's a good idea to be doing that. Like, just those genres. I just Can don't Can you do think... my... Oh. <laughs> now, I remember that you've you've pitched this one before, I think. Really? Because yeah. I'm just looking at the list of the top 100 songs of the 2000s. <laughs> well, as soon as you did that, no, 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 no part, I'm pretty sure I've I heard that. I try to walk away and I took... Trying to say goodbye and I stumble. If I try to now, it, it's clear. Okay, and I Gord. don't remember the words to this either. Gord, I, I, uh, this, I just don't understand the point. You keep picking songs that I just, I mean, why not the the milk jugs one? The mom by boys come to the yard. You might as well do that one. Well, what's that was actually on my list. Is it really? My milk jugs bring all the boys from the yard? Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> How about this one? My baby don't mess around because she loves me so and as I know for sure. But uh, I think it should be higher, don't you? Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. My baby don't mess around because she loves me so and as I know for sure. She That's really great. Won, but can stand to see me walk out that door. Do you know that song? No, that that's yeah, that's the that outcast band. Here's the chorus. I... Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, okay, okay. Yeah. All right, Gord, that's that's fantastic. I, I that one, maybe just put that out as an iTunes single. Oh, that's maybe. a good idea. So kind of as a single or as a forty-five, now, but now on like, the internet service. I, I, I want to, I want you to see this new app. It's just it's your face on this app. It's just called the Gord app, and uh, 
I mean, we can do anything with this thing, Gord. At the moment, we just have your songs on it and certain videos that uh, you've done. And uh, Is there anything you'd like to add to this, perhaps? Well, this uh, is, I saved the best for last, and this was actually your suggestion. I don't know if you remember when you texted me this earlier this afternoon. Can, well, heck, can I record this for the app? Please do. Okay. We need a name like Gord App or Gordon... Or Gord Orange or something. Kind of a non sequitur. <coughs> Gordon Lights app? Gordon Lights app sounds perfect. <laughs> okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. We've come too far to give up who we are. Do you know it? So let's read that pause. The fantastic. And our cards to the stars. This is like, this is talking about um, trying to haul some road strange. Oh, 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 it is, is it? She's up all night to the sun. I'm up all night to get some. She's up all night for good fun. I'm up all night to get lucky. We're up all night to the sun. We're up all night to get some. We're up all night for good fun. Sing it. Yo, that up all night to get lucky. Isn't it We're fun? up all night to get lucky. We're up all, We're up all night to get lucky. We're up all night to get lucky. Sing it. Let's get all up to get horny. We're Isn't up all fun? night to get Maybe lucky. Maybe what I do when I record the song is I don't sing the next line, and so people can kind of sing along, and it's like Gordy Oki. Well, I don't know. I just like, I hear that song, and it just makes me want to have some mints. Crunch up it some It makes mints. you want to have intimate relations with partial strangers. It sure does. Makes me crazy. Hey, Bernie. Yeah. I'm going to take this back to the lab, see if my bizoy Drake is around, so I can lay down some shiznat. Sound have you, dope? Have you finished the tunnel to his place? Haven't finished it yet. In fact, I did have a bit of an altercation with one of his security guys, who was ironically nicknamed Tiny. Oh, uh, did you did you hear uh, the big story uh, about uh, Drake? Uh, he would, He was telling me. That uh, the, this whole thing with Pusha T, he could care less about Pusha T, he said. And he said the whole, the whole album he did is the last stuff was a diss against the Kanye West. Because Sorry, that, I had a nap in the middle of that sentence. What are you saying, Burn? <laughs> it's, a, it's about the Kanye West, that record, because apparently Drake went down there to Kanye's and uh, told him what he was doing, and then he came back, and then he went back there again, there's... 400 rappers in the room, and all of a sudden Kanye had a record coming out, and uh, Drake got pretty steamed because he had the, his own idea. Is this a Bruce Coburn contract here on the coffee table? Yeah, that's actually. Look, it's uh, we're we're playing the uh, the Ryman for a week. That's your old haunt. Yeah, as I recall, we played it for three weeks at a time. Well, you know, we're just starting. But good for Bruce, you know, starting out, catching some breaks. That's good for the young guy. Yeah, and also he's, uh, you know, he did Mariposa last year. He was wondering if he wanted to uh, come to his uh, his place in San Francisco and play some chess or checkers. Well, well, you know what I like to say about Bruce Coburn is that he's been opening for me since 1969. It's one continuous audition. That's not really what I was asking, but uh, okay. Anyway, Burn, take care. Good luck with uh, getting Bruce some breaks because uh, the kid deserves it. He works hard. Ain't no problem. And you know what I do? I like that idea that you have about the, uh, some of those songs are fantastic. Now get, get out of here, Gord. Take care, super bass. That's right. Tags, I didn't even tell you. I went to see, or did I? Went to see Stephen Page at the Marigold Center in Truro. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did, we didn't talk about this yet? No. And I, I, we did, I think... I think we maybe did offline, but um, oh, okay, I, yeah. I had mentioned to him uh, several weeks ago that I live in the Truro area, yeah. and if they needed anything when they were passing through, did not hesitate to reach out. And he remembered and sent a message on the day of the show saying, do you want to come to the show tonight? Here's the thing. I always feel weird about accepting an offer of tickets. Yeah. And the truth is we had asked or, or tried to buy some online, and they only had singles left. And we were like, oh, that's too bad. So I felt compelled to tell him that, that I didn't assume I would be given free tickets and I'd be happy to buy them. Mm -hmm. But I also wanted to tell him that we had tried to buy them so he didn't think that I just would assume that I should get tickets or he would remember. I thought that was very nice. And he rocked it with the, he's got Craig and the odds buds with him, right? 
He has Craig. Well, the odds were with him in New Brunswick on Canada he's, Day. He's this was Kevin, a trio set up with Kevin, Kevin Fox. Fox, who's a cellist. Yes, he's. I and know Craig from Ons. Yep. Man, Good. Craig can wail. Yeah, he's fantastic. Well, Great first position. of all, I should start by saying Stephen sounds unbelievable. Yeah, he sounds great. He's got pipes. The page. He's got pipes, and you know, I I do. It's the pipes of the pipes of Page. They are, and and I do, I do a cartoonish, semi rendition of Stephen Page enough to go like, yeah, okay, that's kind of what he sounds like. But that kitten has claws. Yeah, and he. I mean, probably wasn't the biggest room he ever played, but it's not like he's trying any less, and I really appreciated that. That's that's awesome. That's great. Then yeah. Craig from Odds, they um, actually did someone who's cool, which I was tickled by, because um, I love his voice, and I think he's a great songwriter too. Yeah. And they even sure. said when Bare Nakeds and Odds would go out on the road together, he said, you're watching the other guy's set every night, and it's hard not to be inspired slash... Um, have their ideas kind of penetrate your brain. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I, I, I have no problem saying I took great ideas that I heard in odd songs and put them in songs that we performed. So they did Alternative Girlfriend into Someone Who's Cool. Cool. And it was just that a treat cool. to get to see like three musicians in a kind of different context just wailing. Yeah, no, it's great. The, the, the Craig's awesome. The odds, I remember them always being one of the best live bands in Canada when they were young. Like back in when they first came out, they were always in nuts. They did crazy cover songs, and their songs were super. They were kind of like, uh, um, like split ends or something. You know, just those kind of really thoughtful, smart, heavy chord progression, intelligent songs. Yeah, but not you know? so um, erudite that it's alienating or off-putting. Yeah. Like very accessible pop songs, yeah. but with clever turns of phrase, and like crowded you would have house. a better idea than me. Like, how did they do? It's like a crowded house type deal. That that kind of band in terms and of great songs. players. Yeah. Like they they all did well, right? They made a living. Well, I mean, they they all still play live all the time in Vancouver, like as musicians, just yeah, regular musicians, just like most musicians are. We are just working all the time playing shows either in clubs or recording for somebody or recording your own music, just constant stuff. Craig also wrote um, the Corner Gas theme, which I suspect was very good to him. Yeah, that's right. Good songwriter, man. Anyway, it was a real treat, and I know I say this every time, but every time I get out to see live music, I think, why don't I do that more? Yeah, right? Isn't it fun? It's the best. Especially uh, when it's music you like. No Cause kidding. Because if you go to something you don't like, it's like, man, why do I do this? Right? Why indeed. I saw the a couple of movies this week with the kids. What'd you see? I saw the Ant-Man and the Wasp. What is and that? Ant-Man versus Wasp, the new Marvel, Paul Rudd. Imagine, you know, the new Marvel, Paul Rudd thing. Is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's kind of like... Uh, comedic slash tongue-in-cheek but also action typical marvel movie i can't believe how they have a movie coming out every month and you have to you have to watch everyone now the kids think because like they there's always like little things that are intertwined with all the movies that connect it which is smart for marvel i guess the studio to realize that you gotta watch this part <clears throat> the thanos attacks but is there, are there any parts of those movies that are too heavy? Like, can Anna go to those? Oh, yeah. No, Anna loves it. Does She's she? She's down. Yeah, she was watching it. She's into what that action saw, hero stuff? She saw... Oh, well, yeah, no, no. She she liked it. What was the other one? I saw another... Oh, uh, The Incredibles 2. That was great. Pixar joint. Haven't seen that either. That's a good one. Go I love that. summertime movies, though, when it's hot or when it's raining. Yeah. Or the ever? Do you have a drive uh, drive in there? Yeah, yeah. There's That's... drive-in bingo here. Get out of here! Have I ever talked about this before? You hook the thing on your window, oh my tune God. it to uh, like AM five forty or whatever, and they call B forty B forty. 
and then you honk when you get bingo, and the cards are like 150 bucks. <laughs> that ain't nothing. How many people go to that? A couple hundred. So it's just like cars r- ripping. Well, you can get whatever you want going in your car, you know? <laughs> hey, here is, um, I, I love my wife for so many reasons, but this idea, I feel, is genius. She has let the girls start their own YouTube channel this summer. Oh, nice. And it's private, yeah. and they can't be seen in the videos, but yeah. they are making their own little movies with their American Girl dolls. Fun. So there's yeah. some videos like in their um, doll house that we made and some yeah. outside like going camping kind of stuff. So it's embracing technology instead of shunning it because kids want to dig into technology, you know? Yeah. No, but I thought great. that was so smart because it's a way to smart. make it work. Yeah, no. And they can get a, a, a feel for it and they're doing it for fun. And there's no reason that, that it has to be seen by tons of people because they can share it with their family and friends, right? Exactly. So that it makes sense. And they get some chops going to do to, that. To, to, uh, well, I, kids I, uh, are great improvisers. Like, they're really good at listening to each other. <laughs> you know, the first rule of improv is the yes and deal. Mm-hmm. So they're really good at, like, you know, bad improv is, man, I can't believe it's snowing. No, it's not. <laughs> good improv is, I can't believe it's snowing. Yeah, and on Christmas Eve, too. <laughs> so know. suddenly you have a little scene going. Like, the, it's <laughs> neat to watch them really listen to each other. Do you know what like I mean? That, like that Liam Neeson when he was on Extras thing, when he's like, I want to be a comedic actor to Ricky What Gervais. was that? Well, he's like, I want to do comedy. And he's, t- he's telling Ricky Gervais, he's, and he wants to be in, in like one of his oh, movies. Oh, oh, I thought you meant Extra, the show with Mario Lopez. Oh, isn't, isn't it Extras, that show? That yeah, that, yeah, yeah, no, Extras, it, or, right. Or was, it, was it the other, it was his other show? Anyway, no, I think just... it was extras, and Kate Kate Winslet was in it too, right? <laughs> no, I don't know because I, th- I I don't remember who, who but I just remember the <laughs> that he's just like saying he wants to do comedy, and he like does what you're saying. It's like knock knock, who's there? I have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> the serious actor guy wanting to do comedy is funny. <laughs> it's ridiculous, and then he's like. You can't, you can't say that kind of stuff. You got to say something else. He's like, knock, knock, knock. He's like, hello. He's like, I have made some riff riddled with it. <laughs> Cricket City. It's, yeah. It's just for, if you watch it on, on YouTube, it's ridiculous. R- Ricky Gervais can pull off that <laughs> oh, it's all, But it's all Liam Neeson just crushing it. His, yeah. his delivery is unbelievable. <laughs> But if you're Liam Neeson, the chance to do something fun yeah. is too hard to pass up, man. Well, Hollywood's tough nowadays, right? It's always like you got to do, you must have to do the worst stuff on the regular base. Oh. So to have a chance to take the piss, yeah? Good chance, I know. Well, no, what if Donovan, it's, it's all in time. That's like a. The take me home because he's working out and he wants to make sure he can do five minutes on the elliptical. I have to be able to do my squats. <laughs> the only way so to do them so is one a second, yeah? <laughs> this posterior right. isn't going to shape itself. <laughs> That's the best. All right, bud. Good job, bud. Bye bye.